Wow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, man, how can we watch a Mavericks Heat basketball game without tapping in with a Hall of Famer and Mavericks GOAT? And I do mean that we are talking to the greatest Maverick of all time. We got Dirk Nowitzki in the building, man. Uh, uh, what do you mean, Dirk? It's, it's what's understood. No, stop it, man. What's understood sometimes has to be said. Uh, and it's so dope, man, to watch you support, of course, the franchise that helped make, define you uh, into the NBA legend that you are. Um, this relationship that you have now developed with Luca is, is one that's special, right? Because you're watching a guy embark on the world of history that you've made, uh, that you've basically set a bar of. Um, tell me your feeling of of receiving the conversation of you know goat like or his potential to become or be how does that make you feel man i'm so mad yeah he's breaking every one of my <laughs> records man that is, just, that is just over uh yeah I'm, I'm thrilled for him obviously uh i got to know him my so my last year was his first year in the league and you know uh, it was just great to see him get to know him a little bit. And I think uh, we saw then in year one that the sky's the limit for him. Uh, but I honestly didn't think he could go there. I mean, the way he has no offensive holes in his, uh, in his, in his game. He can do it all. He can shoot the step back. He can go both ways. He can post. He's got the mid-range. He's got the flow. He's got all the horse shots. I mean, he's, he's, got, he's got the full package. And he's uh, been tremendous to watch. Every year I'm saying, this kid can't can possibly get better. And then sure enough, next year he comes back with, with more in his repertoire. And it's been, it's, been, uh, it's been incredible to watch his first couple of years in the league get better. And, and hopefully Mass fans enjoy him for a long, long time. What was your what was your feelings um, about the uh, you know the Kyrie of it all in the beginning stages? Um, were you clear as to seeing it becoming what it is today? I mean, you know, we talk about the Mavs being in fifth in the West and now in uh, you know a secure playoff position to go up against the Clippers if it stays the way it is in um, in the postseason now. But were you a fan of the decision? Did you get it right away, or was it one that you were like, all right, we'll see what it becomes? Well, anytime you can get a scorer like Kyrie, I think you got to go for it. Uh, he's one of the best point guards we've ever seen in this game. And, you know, you just kind of sometimes have to wait and see. You never know how things are going to play out, right? Sometimes you can amass all this talent, and at the end of the day, it's still not working. So we saw some of that uh, last year after the trades. The stuff didn't work right. I think they were still filling each other out. Who's taking it over at, at times? And I think both were hesitant a bit. And so I think this year, I think uh, they've had more and more games on, under their belts and uh, they're playing well off each other. They know when, when the other guy's attacking, when the, when the other guy has to take a rest. And so, uh, and then uh, obviously the complimentary guys have, uh, have been great that they've been upgraded and the chemistry seems great. Uh, so it's been, it's been fun to watch, man. It's been, uh, hopefully they can have a good playoff run and, uh, but they're set up, you know, we have shooting, we have athletes, we can, you can switch a lot. Uh, we got two of the, the best playmakers down the stretch and closer. So I think we're set up to, uh, to have a pretty good run, but hey, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I agree with you, Dirk. I think you guys are. One more, one more thing that I got to ask you, man. You know, you are a guy that definitely changed you changed the conversation within the game of, of how uh, a big was playing the game, right? That versatile big that could shoot, dribble, uh, turn his back to the basket, that could also face you uh, and score. Right now, that mid-range game that you perfected, right, that you, you had and you operated in at the highest level possible, you now see the mid-range, it's extended even more to where the game is played outside the, uh, the three-point line. You know, I would love to hear your perspective on just how you continue to see the game improve and expand and these players continue to get better. What are the biggest changes that you are like witnessing to date that you're like, oh my God, wow, I wish we had have done this here. 
I mean, it's just the skill level of the bigs, especially the guards. Of course, the range have is, is extended with 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 Steph coming in the league, and but also the bigs now. I, I, if you're a big uh, nowadays, you got to bring up the ball. You got to make decisions on the high posts. You got to pass a little bit. Sometimes you bring up the ball. You initiate the offense. Sometimes the offense is run through you in the high post. Uh, you have to pick and pop at times. I mean, so it's uh, mm -hmm. it's been fun to watch the evolution of the big from when I first got in the league when, you know, you still had in the late 90s, you had the two big muscle rebounders under the hoop. And then, you know, slowly but surely, you know, guy, the, the game changed a little bit. The, the NBA changed some of the rules and they put in the zone. And so they took away the hand check in and, and they put in the five second back down rule. And so all of that changed the game a little bit in a more free flowing, more passing, more shooting, more bringing the ball, a pick and roll game that we've been seeing the last 20, 25 years. And, and some of these guys just taking the, the game to another level. And you always think you've seen it all. And then comes a Kevin Durant, who's a seven foot two guard. Now we have a seven five two guard, Wembanyama running around there doing the stuff that he does, doing the sham guard the other night. I'm like, this is, this is just incredible where the game, uh, where the skill level is gone, where the range has gone from these guys. So uh, it's just, I have, I have no idea what's next, but we'll just, we'll just have to I mean, watch it, and see. And it continues, it continues to improve. This is, this is a moment, Dirk, just for me to share some frustration that I, that I have with you. Uh, and this was okay. early on in my uh, NBA 2K please, days please. when I used to let play with the Mavs. Um, you know, uh, well, there was just a moment where they just had you falling on the time. You were falling all the time on the game, and I never understood why. Did you ever talk to them about the reason behind you falling uh, on NBA yeah, no. 2K? Like, it was just nonstop uh, dirt goes down. Did you ever address uh, yeah. it? Did you ever feel like I did. I didn't, but you know what? They, they stole that from real life. I think uh, my balance yeah. and, uh, and, and my stability just wasn't there. Uh, my core strength wasn't there. Yeah. So yeah. I was I was falling a lot. Every time I, I did like a layup yeah. and somebody pushed me a little bit, yeah. I was like a, a turtle yeah. on its back. Uh, but you know that's, that's just the way I, way I had to play with uh, with the physique, with the physique I got given, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dirk, I cannot have you on here, man, and just not highlight. I know we just showed some of your highlights, but just for the world that may not be aware, man, Dirk uh, has the six most NBA points, um, I mean, career points in NBA history. Uh, guys, he's a member of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. You're talking about a guy in the 2006-07 NBA. He got an MVP there. Uh, also, an NBA title, 2011. Keep going. Keep, keep going. 14 times. 14-time All-Star, 12-time All-NBA. The man played 21 seasons in all with the Mavericks. The biggest highlight to anyone's success is doing it under the franchise umbrella and not moving. And I know right now we're in a time where players do move around, but the fact that you are one of the players that had the luxury of staying in one city, uh, being embraced, you know, from the beginning all the way to the end is unbelievably amazing. Has the most career made fadeaway jumpers in the last 25 seasons season and also has the most career <laughs> three-pointers by a seven-footer in the NBA. These are all stats that I looked up myself, Dirk. I'm just showing you how oh, passionate sweet. I am about the opportunity. I this is where I am right I now. That. Uh, Thanks Dirk, for looking it up. Dirk, does it seem like I know the game of basketball very well? What, what's your take on the job that I'm doing? Uh, Give it to me straight, Dirk. I mean, I, I think you're faking your way through pretty good. You know, I don't know how much uh, how much you, do or you actually watch. <laughs> But uh, you're, you're doing okay. You guys are trying to break down the game. Well, I see you. I see you trying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dirk, I mean, I played the game. I played it at a high level. Uh, and, you know, when you I play see, it, Dirk, it's you, easy to understand. The All-Star games. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Dirk, I always wonder at, at, at your, at your height. Oh, the to-go blades. What does that mean? What, what are you oh. about to say? Okay, Dirk. All right. Dirk. Oh, here you go. Somebody said, uh, let's please ask Dirk if he's coming to the cookout. Oh, with these aluminum foil wrapped around plates. Okay, Dirk. Well, uh, clearly Dirk is definitely leaving a black household <laughs> with that plate there. It's, uh, it's a very flimsy, oh, yeah, I, flimsy that, paper plate that with a lot came of up aluminum foil that, on it. That, that keeps coming up. The, the to-go plate was a highlight <laughs> for a long, long time. And I still, every now and then on Twitter, somebody hits me up. Uh, I, had some, I had some good food on there, for sure. Some home-cooked food. Yeah.
What's the what's the best? We're we're about to go to break, Dirk, and you know if you can stay with us, it would be great. But I definitely want to know what is the best part about retirement. As somebody like you said that spent you know 21 seasons playing a game, then that you're not playing, what is the best thing that you're enjoying? You know, honestly, it's traveling. You know, I, I've gone around the world during my career, but I never really was able to, to, to see anything. I was always focused. I was in hotel rooms. I didn't want to walk too much the day before the game. So now I'm like, I'm a, I'm a tourist out there. I'm, I'm going to all these sites. I'm going to museums. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it all. So that's been, that's been so much fun. I've been looking forward to it, showing we have three young children, showing, showing the kids the world. Uh, you know, showing them uh, different wow. cultures, different languages. So uh, I think that's been uh, the most enjoyable thing in retirement. Do you think that Luka Doncic has a chance to be the greatest Maverick ever? In sp yeah. Like, obviously, Dirk is who Dirk is. Yeah, I'm no disrespect to Dirk. Dirk knows I love him to death, right? Dirty and I go way, way back. But Dirk will be the first one to tell you Luka's better. Interesting. That's tough. Okay, now, Dirk, I want you to understand this about me, man. I am not... Uh, okay. I'm not a person that's here to like start stuff, right? Like I think that, you know, that's ridiculous to start stuff. But I do want to ask you your feeling about that because Mark but, Cuban is a really good yeah. friend of yours. I'm, I'm very close to Mark as well. For Mark to say that, I just want to know how did that make you feel, Dirk? How did it make you feel to hear that? Well, the good, the good thing is here that Mark doesn't know anything about basketball, so he, he doesn't know what he's watching. <laughs> so. Uh, that, Oh, kidding. <laughs> kidding. Uh, Mark's my guy. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I got to say he's spot on. You know, I mean, the, the, what Luca's doing on uh, from from not only scoring himself, he's leading the league in scoring, but the passing, uh, the all around game, the, the, the rebounding that he averaged, uh, I think last year, averaged a triple double for an entire month. I mean, the stuff that he's doing, I was never capable of doing. Honestly, I was. I was, a, I was a scorer, and then next I was a scorer, and then I could score, and the rest was sort of like, you know, I rebounded a bit. I helped on defense a bit. I was a horrible passer. So uh, the, the, the kid wow. has a, a way better package than, than I ever had. Whoa, Dirk. Uh, okay, two things. First thing, I want you to understand that greatness has to stem from uh, – a piece of greatness that I can build off of. So what we're watching Luca develop into and become, it's no coincidence, right? Especially Luca coming across from across the water and and having the uh, understanding of who the great ones to play at the highest level were, what their games were. You're building off of those blocks and you're enhancing from that. So to see Luca like develop into the player that he is today, Dirk, you do have a lot to do with that groundwork, right? You do have a lot to do with that foundation. So what I what I really hope people take away from hearing you really like agree with Mark and be comfortable with that. It's called passing the, the baton properly. That's what you're supposed to do. And, you know, it's in your best interest and the rest of the world to see people surpass the greats of old to become the greats of new. That's what's supposed to happen. So if it's done correctly, you know, it's uh, it's something that we all love and that we'll all fall, you know, fall in line with. So I, I'm firm, like, I'm in so, I'm so, like, I'm so happy to hear you talk about Luca the way you do because it just shows the type of legend that you are. And you're not the legend that's looking for sure. legend of self. You're looking for the legend to continue to rise, man. And and that's special. Yeah. And I, I'm willing to bet you that's probably what Luca respects about you the most. I uh, appreciate it. But yeah, I mean, like you said, records are always meant to be broken. You know, there's always another guy coming along that's taking something of the game to another level. And all we can do is, is do our best, work hard, try to help the game out. And then somebody else comes and, and takes it to another level. And that's what you've been seeing now with Luka and all, and Giannis and Jokic, all these, now Wembanyama, all these Europeans coming in the league. You know, I learned from like a deadlift shrimp for Tony Kukoc, Vlade Divac, all these guys for were there before me and then I came in, try to, what they brought to the game, I try to take it to another level and then and Powell, Kazal and Tony came in with me and we try to uh, grow the game in Europe and then here, now you have this generation that's that's unbelievable. So 
if we were a small part and and somebody else's uh, growth and and uh, and, and help somebody else motivate or, or you know get them into play this the sport of basketball, then obviously that's that's super humbling to hear. And we're just all part of you know a bigger picture, and that's growing the game. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think I would be happy about anybody breaking my records. I'm gonna punch him in the face because <laughs> I have a lot of records too, Dirk. And if somebody would break them, yeah, you do. I think it's time you to do. fight. Right? It's time to fight if that happens. Sure. I'm gonna punch sure. them in the face. <laughs> That's my personal feelings, but it's a little different. Uh, Dirk, man, I got to thank yeah. you for coming on, man.